Hello friends, welcome to Weathercast. In this video, I am going to talk about the dynamics of Cyclone Gati that has formed in the Arabian Sea and the upcoming Cyclone Ivar that will form in the Bay of Bengal. So, uh, in this video, uh, I am only going to focus on the dynamics and share with you what are the uh, aspects, different aspects of dynamics that went into formation of these uh, cyclones. Um, and um, I hope that this will be useful uh, in order to understand upcoming systems and also um, to appreciate the dynamics behind these uh, complex systems that form in uh, the Indian Ocean. All right, so uh, let us get into the genesis aspect. Uh, if you see, uh, on our, um, this is a chart from November 20th, um, and uh, there was uh, this uh, system in Arabian Sea, which was a low pressure system. It was not a cyclone at that time, it was a low pressure. Uh, and at the same time, there was a system brewing in the Bay of Bengal. And uh, 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 around the same time, there was another system in the South Indian Ocean. So it was a very complex uh, dynamical uh, system that was brewing in the tropical Indian Ocean. Uh, something uh, if, if uh, um, in a colloquial language I would call a triangular uh, kind of a system format. All right? uh, and that uh, actually made things very difficult for the models. Uh, hence it was very important to break down the dynamics and uh, look at each system uh, from a different viewpoint and uh, look, at, look at it uh, in, a, in, a, in a microscopic manner and see what happened uh, in, with that particular system. Okay? Uh, so the genesis is basically that uh, uh, around uh, the same time there were three systems which were uh, in the tropical Indian Ocean. Uh, so let us not worry about the southern uh, Indian Ocean system because that's not going to uh, affect us. Uh, so we'll only focus on the two systems, one in Arabian Sea and one in the Bay of Bengal. So let us talk about Cyclone Gati, uh, which uh, on 22nd of November in the morning, uh, it uh, became a cyclonic storm. And uh, the interesting thing about Gati was it uh, actually rapidly intensified from a cyclonic storm to a very cy severe cyclonic storm. Um, and it made landfall over um, the Somalian coast. So if you see, this is the nighttime uh, picture where the cyclone has made landfall. Uh, but uh, the models did not predict this kind of an intensification. Uh, hence, uh, it, is, uh, it, it becomes all the more important to understand what could have um, led to this rapid intensification and that too as this uh, system went closer to the coast. Very, uh, uh, in a short, I mean, j just, just a short time before landfall, why, how, why do systems intensify? Because uh, that also happened with Nisarga in June when uh, before 24 hours before landfall, it became a cyclonic, cyclonic storm and then um, a few hours before, before landfall, it became a severe cyclonic storm. So what is happening with these kind of systems and why models are not able to capture it? All right, so uh, the, inter the first aspect is uh, the Madden-Julian oscillation, which after a long, long delay, um, it moved into our basin around uh, 15th of uh, November. And uh, seven, uh, 18th of November is when the Arabian Sea system kind of became a low pressure or I think 19th of November, one of the two dates. And that is very clear because MGO amplitude is very high. So what this is showing is RMM1 and RMM2, which, which are the real uh, multivariate in indices of MGO. Uh, and what it is showing is whenever the MGO signal is within this circular box, then it is very weak and it is not going to support uh, formation of a cyclone. Uh, Whereas if it is in the if this amplitude is outside the box, then that means there is a very high correlation between the outgoing long wave radiation and the wind speeds, uh, so that will actually trigger a, a very enhanced convection between atmosphere and ocean, and it will uh, nicely couple together, and it will lead to a con continuous moisture updraft and formation of this vorticity or deposition of this positive vorticity, which is very important for formation of cyclone. So it is very important that. When a system is going to intensify, then this MGO should be outside this inner circle. So amplitude of MGO is very, very important. All right. Uh, so and as you can clearly see, it was minus two, which is very high. And that is why the Arabian Sea system actually got a lot of push and it uh, uh, could sustain uh, for a longer time. And uh, when Gati was uh, uh, in open waters, it was around, it was in this region where the temperatures are around 28 degrees. 
uh, and then it slowly moved away from Indian coast. Uh, but one interesting thing is that it didn't intensify. Uh, it did not intensify before uh, it went into these waters, which are 27 degrees Celsius waters. Okay. So uh, what is the so 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 why did it so although the SST here is lower, the SST here is 27 degrees, whereas here it's 28 degrees. SST is lower. How did it rapidly intensify? That is a question because all of us think that. Uh, the only way systems can intensify is only through the uh, the sea surface temperature which should be very high. Of course, sea surface temperature is uh, should be high for a cyclone to form, but there are other aspects as well. What is that aspect? So let us go back one step. Around 19th of November, what, hap what happened was there was a mixed Rossby wave signal. So this is known as a mixed Rossby gravity wave. Uh, the mixed Rossby gravity wave or a M MRG wave uh, can be found out when there are two twin system when there are twin systems uh, are above and below the equator so this is the equatorial line and there is a system in the uh, northern hemisphere and there is a system in the southern hemisphere and there is ex ID, uh, uh, this is kind of symmetric so if i if i cut the line and if i superimpose the two on each other it will be almost symmetric okay given all the chaos that exists in weather uh, getting such a symmetric pattern is very difficult, but uh, MRG signal, which is a mixed loss B wave, can produce such systems. And this MRG signal is the one that planted the seed for the Bay of Bengal system on 19th. Okay, so MRG, which is a mixed loss B wave, was the one which actually planted the seed because MJO was still in uh, Arabian Sea basin because it was in phase two. All right, so it had not moved to uh, Bay of Bengal basin yet on 19th of November. So MRG signal gave the uh, plant the, the seed for the Bay of Bengal system and MRG wave, Vix Rossby gravity wave moves westward. It, its movement is from east to west. So as it moves from east to west, the waves actually perturb, give a lot of perturbation uh, to the atmosphere. So they transfer a lot of energy within the atmosphere itself, thereby triggering, triggering an instability and thereby triggering uh, active convection. So this Vix Rossby wave, as it moved from 19th towards the west, so it was moving towards this system. And that is when, uh, uh, even though the SST were, is lower, but the traveling of this mixed Rossby wave coincided with the system gaining momentum, and that is what led to the rapid intensification is my take. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is that SST, OH, uh, sea surface temperature, OHC, which is ocean heat content, those are all good, and those are all good markers of cyclone. But the intensification rapid intensification cannot happen just because of those two because it's, I can clearly prove that SST is lower here which means there are cooler waters so the system should not rapidly intensify. The only way that it can intensify is some other signal which is the mixed, mixed, mixed Rossby wave signal that traveled towards the east coast, uh, west coast and it gave the push for the Gati uh, to become a VSCS which is a very severe cyclonic storm. So that is the dynamics of Gati. Right? Now let us talk about the Bay of Bengal system. Uh, as of today, it is a well-marked low-pressure system. It is lying around um, southwest Bay of Bengal, uh, close to Sri Lanka. Right? Uh, now when this system formed, like I already said, a mixed Rossby wave signal uh, is the one that planted the seed for this system to form and become a low-pressure and then uh, intensify into a well-marked low-pressure system. The reason I am saying this is because the MJO was on 19th, the MJO was still in the uh, phase 2 which is closer to the Arabian Sea right so it had not moved into Bay of Bengal yet right uh, so only on 21st it moved but the planting happened because of this MRG signal which makes Rossby gravity wave signal after that around 21st you see that the MGO signal is is moving to phase 3 which is very ideal for Bay of Bengal basin all right and that helped in uh, uh, kind of uh, intensification of the system to a well marked low pressure system okay uh, and then now as if you see the system is uh, the mgo is now going into a weaker phase because it is going into this inner circle which means the support is going to be weaker because the amplitude of convection so the convection is going to be slightly suppressed that doesn't mean that a cyclone in bay of Bengal cannot form because sst's are very high the seed has already been planted that is what is important okay even without the mgo present in the Bay of Bengal because it was in the Arabian Sea on 19th of November, the seed was planted by uh, the mixed Rossby gravity wave signal. 
which gave the perturbation and which which led to a con enhanced convective activity and formed that uh, low pressure system in Bay of Bengal. Now to sustain that, you need even without the MGO support, you can sustain that system because there is high SSD and that is not all that is needed. There is a very important aspect which is very unique to cyclonivar which is going to form that is the Sri Lankan topology. So what is going to happen is this particular uh, cyclone Nivar is going to move uh, uh, towards Sri Lanka. It is not going to make landfall over Sri Lanka, but it is going to brace the tip of that Sri Lankan coast. Okay, and then it is going to make landfall into Tamil Nadu. That is very clear. However, as it approaches Sri Lanka, this tip of Sri Lanka or northern part of Sri Lanka, two things are going to happen. One is that particular tip of Sri Lanka, uh, because of the dynamics uh, of the atmosphere, an uh, anticyclonic circulation is going to form, which is going to be a ridge kind of a uh, pattern. So cyclones will avoid, will move along the ridge, correct? So that is the reason that ridge, that localized ridge that is going to form over Sri Lanka is the reason why the cyclone cannot make landfall over Sri Lanka, but it will be pushed up, not as it, as this kind of comes in, it will be pushed up. So there is going to be a rapid change in the direction, okay? So it is, it is going to come like this, and then it is going to take a kind of a rapid upward turn okay so that's very important and that is mainly because of the topology of Sri Lanka which is going to make the system move upwards towards Tamil Nadu one thing the second thing that is going to happen is there are going to be waves which are going to be atmospheric waves which are going to be generated because of the presence of the Sri Lankan uh, uh, continent here okay so what is going to happen is an uh, internal gravity wave or uh, you can also call it as inertial, inertial gravity waves, inertial gravity waves, whatever you want. That wave is going to be generated and that wave is going to enhance the positive vorticity that, vorticity that is going to be given to the system. And that is going to uh, rapidly intensify the system. Okay, So up till 24th, the system is going to uh, likely uh, not um, intensify very rapidly. But because as this as it comes towards the Sri Lankan uh, northern Sri Lankan uh, tip, it is going to do two, two things. It is going to be rapidly deflected upwards and it is going to rapidly intensify. These are the two things that are going to happen. Is what I feel, okay? And the reason is I have clearly clearly told the reason it will move upward is because of the ridge local ridge that will be present, and the reason it will intensify is because of the wave action which will deposit positive vorticity to this system. So even though the MGO will go into a weaker phase, these dynamics will ensure that cyclone Nivar uh, will uh, intensify and I mean it will form and it will move towards Tamil Nadu. Alright, so I hope the dynamics are clear. Given all these dynamics, Nivar is a tricky cyclone. It's very tricky cyclone because the Sri Lankan topology is not very easy to, um, uh, is going to be the wild card. and. Uh, even though uh, whatever I have said is possi possible, but in the end we don't know what is going to happen, but that is the most likely scenario is what I feel. It will be modulated by the Sri Lankan topology. And from my understanding, uh, this is just my personal take, please follow IMD for all the alerts. Okay, this is just my personal understanding. Please don't quote me or don't uh, believe in this, these things too much. Uh, I'm just spreading whatever I feel. Okay, and only from a dynamical viewpoint. Likely landfall is going to be near Karakal, which is uh, um, the coastal belt um, along Tamil Nadu. Plus or minus 75 kilometers of Karakal is possible. And it is going to make uh, a landfall likely as a VSCS, which is a very severe cyclonic storm, which, which means winds packing greater than 190 kilometers per hour. On November 25th, between morning to afternoon, any time during that time. Okay. Uh, Depending on the topology or the ridge action or the wave action, the Sri Lankan wave action, which is which I talked about, there is a possibility that it could be shifted up, so it could make landfall over Pondicherry. But my feeling is Karikal. Okay, so delta regions of Tamil Nadu should be highly cautious. Uh, of course, the entire coastal belt from Chennai to Karikal should be cautious, and red alert has been given by IMT already. Uh, after making landfall, it will then move inland towards Vellore as a deep depression or a CS on November 25th late night and then towards Bangalore as a deep depression or a depression uh, on November 26th early morning uh, or as a, even as a well marked low it all depends on how much friction the land can offer right uh, so this is my personal take on Nivar uh, and like I said please follow IMD for all the updates I'm just 
giving the dynamical aspect and it i hope that these dynamical aspects will help us in understanding each cyclone and uh, and uh, uh, trying to predict these uh, these kind of uh, aspects of cyclones much ahead in time and also maybe try to incorporate these things in the models uh, because models are having a tough time uh, frankly speaking both with gati as well as nimar all right guys this is uh, from my end whatever i wanted to share uh, i hope it was useful uh, so please uh, um support me in this cause and subscribe to this channel for regular weather updates along with the dynamics thank you so much have a great day and stay safe tamil nadu stay safe goodbye